Good evening everyone and uh, welcome to the active Aldec Active HDL tutorial. My goal here is to give you a brief overview on how to use the Aldec Active HDL simulation environment. Uh, before you start, you must always be connected to the ASU's network. Um, ASU's network provides the license server which gives us access to the Active HDL tool. To, so to connect to the VPN, we use the Cisco AnyConnect VPN client. You've installed that if you'd follow if you have already followed the tool setup instructions provided on the Blackboard for this course. Uh, I will go ahead and try and connect right now, and what we will see is you get a screen like so, and it says I want to go to, I want to do an SSL connection to ASU's VPN server. So I'm going to say select that, and I'm going to type in my ASU right user ID and password. You've all been given, you have all been given access to the ASU VPN server so this shouldn't be a big deal. You should be able to access this just fine. If not, please let me know and we'll troubleshoot this through uh, ASU's technical support staff. When that disappears, you know that you've been connected to the VPN server. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start the Aldec Active HDL tool. So, what we're doing here is we're starting a simul we're starting our simulator. The simulator is responsible for giving us a model of what a real-world implementation might look like. It also gives us the ability to create arbitrary inputs that would emulate a real-world scenario. Let's go ahead and let's click next. What we're doing here is we're saying which version do I want to select? Which one do I have, have access to? You only have access to the educational version mixed design entry of Acti Active HDL. What that means by mixed design, it means VHDL and Verilog, not analog and digital. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click next. And by doing this, you are accessing or rather obtaining a license within Active HDL. And if it comes up, it should come up like so, or something similar. What you're shown is the units in your design, the libraries available to you. Libraries, just like you would have in the C programming language or Java or any other language, you have libraries. These are components that you can use that already have some functionality. In our class, we will not be using these libraries. We will be designing all of our own code. So we're going to disable, the, we're going to turn off the library manager view. We also will not be doing any variable watching, so we'll turn off the watch. What we are going to do is we're going to say, create a new project. Now, the way it works is Active HDL calls a project a workspace. Now, a workspace, think of it as a collection of designs. A workspace is a, where, a place in which we can place all of our designs. A design could be a set-top box. A design could be a video decoder. A design could be a flip-flop. It's up to you. The workspace contains all that. So we will create a workspace. I am going to create a new workspace called ASU CSC 591 Lab 0. And I'm going to store it in C colon slash my designs. And I'm going to add a new design to my workspace. I'm going to create an empty design. What this means is I'm not going to use any automatic tools, automatic third generation code, code generation tools. There are ways in which you can draw a schematic or you can instantiate a FIFO or you can do certain things. That is outside of the scope of this course. We are doing hardware design using hardware design languages. So we're going to create an empty design and we're going to follow our own design flow. So we're going to click Next. I click Next and now it's saying how would you like to design? Would you like to use a schematic or would you like to use an HDL language? We are using a hardware design language. We are going to be using Verilog. Our vendor is Xilinx and we will be using the Spartan 3A technology. Now you actually do not need to specify the target technology 
unless you're going to be doing gate level simulations. For those of you unfamiliar with that terminology, disregard that for the moment. You will be familiar with it by the end of this course. Now, again, the way this works with ALDEC is they have a workspace, and in that workspace exists all of your designs. Um, I'm not really happy with the way they segregate their projects. So you have projects and then you have sub-projects. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make my workspace only have one design. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to name my design the same name as my workspace and I'm going to indicate that it's located in that design folder. What I've done here is I said create a design in the exact same place the workspace is located. You don't have to follow this method. You can create a workspace and then a design. It's really up to you, but for me, I like it to have I like to have only one design within a workspace. So I click next and it says I'm going to create a design for you. Now what I want to do is I want to create a simple design to talk about. So I'm going to do is create add a new file. Let's go ahead and let's design a uh, positive edge detect dot and we'll call that positive edge detect positive edge detect dot v. What we will get here is we will get a blank file. The file has nothing in it. So what I would like to do is I would like to start creating the port declaration for this. I would like to create the module definition. To do that I say module PED. Now if you remember in our lab we actually have a positive edge detect design completed. So what I want to do is I want to borrow the definition of that positive edge detect. Um, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into my lab. And our lab starts out and it says, here's how to build a positive edge detect in Xilinx. Well, we're going to do this in Active HDL. We're going to simulate it. You use Xilinx for synthesizing and creating a true design. You use Active HDL for simulating, for modeling the design. Now let's talk about what I'm doing here. I'm going to cut and paste. Let me warn you here that cutting and pasting is actually tricky. Not everything cuts and pastes the way you expect. So we have to always be cognizant of what we're copying over. Let me explain. I've just copied over my design, my module declaration, along with all the individual details. Now what you'll see is it doesn't look exactly the same. You'll see that a line break occurred when I copied it, which ended up putting this down here and would have created a syntax error. We don't like that. So you have to be very careful when you're cutting and pasting. It can create a lot of errors, it can create you a lot of headache. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use ActiveHDL's code cleanup. It'll actually go ahead and comment, I mean it'll format your code so it sort of looks a little prettier. You click that and it automatically formats your code. What I did is I clicked up here and you'll see that there's these little line separations and like they're indented. So what it does is it indents your code so it's easier to read. Now we've made all these changes to PED.V. We want to save them, and now we want to compile them. Okay, so I'm going to compile. Fantastic, it compiled with zero errors, zero warnings. Now I want to test my design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a PEDTB, and what I'm doing here is not sufficient for your assignment. You need to test further than what I'm doing, but this is to get you started. So I'm going to create a test bench. A test bench, think of it as like a lab. I have my design PED and I put it onto the test bench and I apply stimulus to it. It's like a breadboard. 
I put in the parts and then I power up the part and see what it does. I test it. And we typically call that TB to mean test bench. Okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a module TB. Now that module has no inputs or outputs. It's actually, I'm sorry, PED TB. Um, it has no inputs. It's actually the top level. It is actually a test bench. A test bench acts as if it's the outside world working on your device. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a module PED TB. First thing we want to do is we want to instantiate our design. What that means is put our design on the test bench. Well, let's let's go ahead and let's look at let's grab the top level signals. And let's go ahead and instantiate that. The way to instantiate is you say the module name that you're referring to and then you give it a unique instance name. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to do connect by name. Remember, there's two ways to connect in a Verilog design. Connect by name and connect by location. Connect by name is by far the safest. So if you remember, the way we instantiate is we have names with a dot, preceded by a dot, and then with two parentheses, or in basically something to say a connection goes here. Now what's going to happen is we're going to need to provide a clock and a reset to this design. So how can we do that? We can do that by the following. We need to create things we can drive. We need to use an initial whoops, typo there. We need to use an initial begin block. An initial begin block allows us to create stimulus at time zero. It starts at time zero. So what happens is the simulator instantiates this and then looks at this and says, okay, this process starts at time zero and ends when all statements have been executed. Okay? All statements within this have been executed. This process ends. It does not sleep. It literally ends to never begin again until the simulator starts again. But for all, for all practical purposes, this runs once to completion. So what we want to do here is we want to provide a signal. Okay? We want to provide an input called SIG. Let's call it um, un edge detect SIG. And let's assign it to zero initially. So at time zero, un edge detect gets SIG. Now, I don't actually want to assign my clocks here, but I, because I want my clock to be free running. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to assign the reset here to zero and I'm going to wait. Uh, what I mean by that is I'm going to wait for X number of clocks. I want to test that if I provide a clock edge pulse, if I provide a pulse, a signal to this positive edge detect, it gives me a pulse on that clock cycle and does not stay active on the next clock cycle. Because if you remember, positive edge detect gives me a single pulse on the first clock cycle it sees signal go high. It positive edge detects. And then after that clock cycle, it, the pulse goes low. It only pulses for one clock cycle. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say at pause edge, whoops, sorry, at 
Pase 